Hi, Chad Burton here from Palo Alto Networks, and I'm here with Dan Kaminsky. Good to see you. It's great to be here. Welcome to Ignite. I am having a blast. We, we benefit much from your expertise, your outlook on uh, all things security. What is, um, what's scaring you right now? What's really top of mind when you look at, uh, at the landscape? There's so much busted. The bad guys are everywhere. Um, I know we hate the phrase APT, but there are so many persistent infections in so many networks. Um, people look at the target infestation. They say, oh, target is bad. And it's like, what? You think the bad guys only hit those, you know, that one company? And, you know, they were offended by the logo? Mm -hmm. No, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And the degree to which we don't know how deep the rot goes is what scares me. Uh, target, as you said, many, many breaches all the time. I mean, how many targets have we not heard about? But exactly. Target, you, I assume you'd agree, heightened the discourse in terms of what, uh, and, and mainstream anyway, in terms of folks being a little bit more paranoid than perhaps they were. Well, Target just really affected Christmas. Like, really, you couldn't buy things. I couldn't buy things. I couldn't buy laptops for White Ops, my company, because a credit card that had never, ever been, a corporate card that had never been used for any sort of consumer shopping had its limit dramatically cut in the middle of the largest shopping season of the year because that's what you do when you're on high alert for credit cards. You constrain credit. When you look at um, how many businesses are being proactive, and you brought this up in your keynote, talking about fighting back, under, not only understanding the threats and freaking out, but actually taking it to the bad guys. Where are we in terms of how we're, we're able to do that? I think the biggest change that's happened is that the discussion has seriously started. We are not going to keep doing security today like we've been doing it for the last five or 10 years. We are going to adapt, we are going to try new things, we're going to measure the effectiveness. A very interesting effect, and this didn't come up in the keynote, but a very interesting effect of an increased attack rate is you can try things and you get quicker feedback on whether they worked or they didn't. Because when you have this constant stream of attackers, you can say, well, in the last month, 10 attacks worked. Now we're gonna try something. The last month, two attacks worked, or 10 attacks still worked, it didn't do anything. And so as much as it's awful that there's all this new and ever increasing threat, at least we have the opportunity to get stronger signal on what works and what doesn't. What, um, what aspects of security technology interest you most right now? Uh, detection. I'm not a huge fan of prevention. I wish I could say that I was, but it's too cut and dry and it provides too much of an oracle to the attackers. The attacker knows if they've bypassed a prevention technology. Mm -hmm. What I really like about detection is they never quite know if they got away with it. It's like they ran their attack, they got their data, but they have no idea if an alert fired somewhere and if everything that they've done and everything that they've built and all of their persistent little bugs are gonna get wiped out one day. And not just at the target network they were looking at, but across the entire field of corporate customers. I think that we are going to enter an era of dramatically increased information sharing mm -hmm. because as I said in the keynote, we're all in this together. And what do you think is lacking in detection techniques at the moment? Interesting question. Um, there are two areas that we focus on in detection. Mm -hmm. There's, am I being attacked? And did the attack work? And those are the obvious places to look. But it's not instantaneous between somebody trying to break in, and by the way, the amount of false positives, lots of people are trying to break in, that's not enough. Then there's, did the attack work? Well, at that point, you've already lost the money. Zane Lackey, former head of security over at uh, 
Etsy and he now has a startup called Signal Sciences, has been pushing something called deep detection. You basically say, look, there's all of these intermediate states between somebody has found a problem and somebody's actually broken in. Detect there because the false positive rate is very low and the information value is incredibly high. You, are, you know someone who's gotten 25% of the way there, 50% of the way there, 75% of the way there. If you start detecting all these intermediate modes, you really get high value, actionable data. And I don't think we're doing much of that now. And I'm watching Zane with his new startup really push this. And I'm very excited. Good to hear. Good to hear. Tell me, uh, tell me about White Ops and what you're working on right now. White Ops has been the most interesting project that I've ever been part of. Um, White Ops basically finds bots with JavaScript. Uh, it turns out that huge amounts of malicious behavior is associated with a computer that doesn't actually have somebody behind the keyboard. Bad guy attacks you from Shanghai. I don't care how clever his exploit is. He's still in Shanghai. He is not teleporting behind the keyboard. And so what we found is that if you look for this remote control, if you look for the bad guy who's still far away but is controlling this machine, when you search for that, there's only so many tricks you can do, and they're so detectable you don't even need native code on the client. You can do it in JavaScript. And so we built this for the financial industry, and it was kind of a challenge to us to see if we could do it. Some friends of mine said, hey, Dan, you do a lot of stuff with browsers. Can you do with this whole like man in the browser Zeus thing? And I'm like, you know, it's hard enough to get a browser to work at all. <laughs> to get it to work inside of a bot, they probably screwed it up. And in fact, they screwed it up. Um, so we got that built. And then fascinatingly, the advertising industry came to us and said, we are in so much trouble. Can you help? The bots, I understand they're doing a lot of stuff to banks. But the bots are clicking things left and right. They're doing impression fraud. They're doing fake video views. They are destroying us, and it is an existential threat to us. You know, I've been doing security for 15 years. Nobody 15 years ago was saying security was an existential threat. But the ad industry came to us, asked if we could help, and what are we going to do? Say no. And then once we started doing a lot of work with advertising, now the finance industry has come back and said, you know, um, it's not like the banks aren't being robbed still. Can you help us too? So it's been this very interesting experience working with enterprises, working with advertisers, working to make the internet a safer place for humans. And I tell people, you know, you go to these websites and like, who would use this? The like, content is terrible. There's ads smeared everywhere. It's playing like five videos with audio. What human would possibly use this? The answer is no human would possibly use it. But bots, terrible taste. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Talk about, um, we're here at Ignite. What are you hearing from, uh, from Palo Alto Networks customers? What are your interesting conversations? Well, as I've been kind of telling people, this is one of the more interesting conferences that I've gone to. I've been speaking professionally for a long time. I've done a lot of corporate events. I've done a lot of technical events. They're not usually the same event. <laughs> so I've been very impressed with um, the caliber of technical talent that I've seen Palo Alto bring to bear out here in Vegas. A lot of the conversations that we've been having with people um, have come down to um, they want to know a lot about our bot technology. Mm -hmm. They really don't want to push an inline device. They don't want to put code on their servers. Mm -hmm. um, they really don't want to try to get their customers to install endpoint stuff. And you know, I want to be clear, the things they don't want to do are all highly technical things that they're saying. They're, like, they're not asking questions about what's easy or hard. They're saying, mm -hmm. I've been through war and I want to know what you can do to stop this problem that isn't going to require me to attend a thousand meetings. And what we tell them is we're relying on JavaScript. They're like, that's it? And we're like, that's it. There you go. And so it's been, uh, 
It's been a very interesting event to attend in that the attendees know what to ask for, know what they want, know what they don't, and it's all technical. Good to hear, good to hear. Well, Dan, thank you for your support of Palo Alto Networks, and we we'll look forward to hearing more from White Ops, and uh, much appreciated. Oh, yeah, it's a blast. Thank you so much. Good.